Rakuten is the smartest way to save money when you shop. Get cash back at over 3,500, I'm going to say it again, 3,500 stores across every single category, including fashion, beauty, electronics, home essentials, travel, dining, and so much more. Membership is free and it's easy to sign up. I love it because it helps me get great deals on my favorite brands like Fenty Beauty, Crocs, Adidas, all the things. Cashback rates change daily. Start all of your shopping at Rakuten.com or get the Rakuten app to start saving today. Your cashback really adds up. Okay, okay, y'all. This is Monet Exchange. This is not a drill. This is not a drill. My U.S. tour of my hit Edinburgh Fringe Festival show, Life Be Life, and it's coming across America, baby. We're coming to Seattle, Portland, Denver, Salt Lake City, Tucson, Asheville, Atlanta, Boston, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., and San Francisco, starting April 30th all the way through May 19th. Y'all, I am so beyond proud of this show. It's so dope. It's so fierce, and I want you guys to all experience it. So please go to MonetExchangeLive.com and get tickets to see my hit one-woman show, Life Be Life In, about, you know, darkly humorous, poignant, coming-of-age, singing a one-woman show. You don't want to miss it. I'll see y'all there. She's an AKA today. What? Well, you're not. You're not the super. You're not super. You're not the pink. You're the pink, but you're not the green. AKA is a, is a, is a more of a Kelly green, not a lime green. You know, I'm not super familiar with the colors of the Greek organizations. Really? Um, and also, I had a real like issue with Greek organizations when I was in when I was in um when I was in college. Which was what? Well, I think my main issue was like I just didn't like how the Greek organizations uh like navigated through campus like this like cool maybe, maybe maybe there was a bit of jealousy in it this like cool kid club and the way that they, the way that i felt like uh non-greeks were perceived um by the greeks on campus and and grant i didn't go to a massive school that had one of those like crazy um like i remember going to auburn university just to like work in the, in opelika and seeing the houses, the the frat houses and the sorority houses, mansions. Yeah. Like when I say mansions, I'm talking mansion mansions. Crazy. Like a, like a, the kind of house you would see on like on like the real world or some shit like that. And um I was just blown away by cuz in, in in Columbus, Georgia, the the house, it was like a four bedroom house. Yeah, maybe five. In, in Princeton, uh cuz you know Westminster is in Princeton and Princeton University is right there. I don't know if they had Divine Nine, but just the frat and the Greek house, the Greek houses were huge. They were like huge. Like, like the shit you see in, in the movie in, in the house bunny, that's what the houses were. They were these like huge, huge, huge. And I wonder, and I guess obviously the fraternity and sorority dues and things pay for that. I get it. But it 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 is kind of crazy to see how like how huge and crazy the houses were. It's kind of fierce. I feel like it's it's quite common for people who were not Greek. And I don't mean Greek like the like from Greece. I mean like in fraternities, or um, sororities, or sororities, or fraternities for women. Because you know there are those too. There are um, who were not in fraternities and sororities, um, or fraternities for women. Um, who just like the Greeks are irritating. They're just an irritating faction on campus. Well, I mean, I went to a music school, so we didn't have like huge Greeks in our life, right? There, there, was, there was we had one, we had two. Uh, Greek houses. We had um, Phi Mu Alpha, which was a fraternity, and there was um, Sigma Alpha Iota, which were the female fraternity. The music, both music, both music uh, things. So it was very like, and we weren't, we weren't a threatening force. We weren't like, we were fucking music nerds. We were fucking singing scales. Like we were not that kind of. Wasn't that kind yeah, of you, yeah. You have to go to a, like a like a regular college to get the like Greek experience, where they're like the Greeks are like. like I remember being at this party, and it wasn't even a Greek party, but this like Q kept being like, he kept like talking to me as if like one day I'll get to be a Q too. And I was like, bitch, I don't want to be. A, he was like. He's like, but I get it, you know. Maybe one day, maybe next year, you'll you'll pledge and you'll get to be a Q. And then he's like barking at me and shit. 
And I'm like, I don't want to be. I'm like, I don't want to be in your fraternity. So you never and wanted to be. You you never wanted to be in in in, in, in a fraternity. I wanted to be on a step team, and I was on a step team. So, but you never wanted to be a fraternity like that. That that never spoke to you. The only part of uh, Greek life that ever spoke to me was step teams. Nothing else in Greek life spoke to me. The hot guys, literally, me. literally, there are hot guys everywhere. There was literally nothing else in Greek life that spoke to me except for choreography and dancing. Yeah, but it was something about like these like fraternity boys, especially the Kappas, like seeing them because at Rider University had Greek life and just to, like see like. They kind of just all being together. They just, they were like a little, they were really suave. Like it, it was hot seeing these like dudes together just all in the, under this brotherhood. That, and also I had my, you know, my hood boy complex at that point. I think the biggest difference between you and me is that I've never been into straight guys. There's, I can't, there's never been a period of my never. life where I was like, where I've been like fawning over straight guys. I have liked sissies since, since Joseph King in high school. Bob, you have never been into a straight guy. Not one. I have no, no, I've never been into like straight guy, like the the demographic of a straight guy. But if a straight guy is kind of faggy, like that's that's attractive to me. If the straight guy is a little fay, if the straight guy is a little, mm, 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 you know what I mean. But I've never been into the idea of straightness. Should we no. start this the sibling rivalry fraternity? No. <laughs> I don't have much experience with being Sigma Rho, so. Sigma Rho, Sigma Rho Pi. Sigma Rho Pi, SR, SR, The SR, girls SR. of Delta Nu. Delta Nu is the only sorority that I've ever been interested in. We we are the Delta. What, what's, what's the lyric? No, isn't that a Delta Nu lyric? Um, daughters of Delta, Delta Nu, new, soon, soon to be fiance. fiance. Now that a man chose you, your life begins today. Make, Make him a happy home. home. Place that is hard on the rage. And uh, uh, try not to act it's your look home. your age. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. You know, I didn't know about that. Uh, I didn't know about that uh, musical until I met y'all fucking theater fags in New York City. Like, the the Legally Blonde musical thing missed me like a fucking... Which I never... Until I started being a drag queen and seeing people perform it at, like, in numbers, I was like, oh, this is actually really cool. But the whole Laura Bell Bundy, Legally Blonde, oh my God, oh my God, you guys missed me. They missed me so hard. You're a little short in the tooth for it, but the reason why the reason why Legally Blind was such a big deal is because MTV did a uh, production of Legally Blonde um, on MTV, like it was just a straight up MTV event. They just they just streamed Legally Blonde on MTV. I remember all why? the theater and okay because 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 the movie was so big. The, the, this is years between the movie and the and the and the, and the Broadway show. This it wasn't like next year, you know what I mean? Um, so when when the movie came, when the when the when they when they streamed the Broadway show, uh, I remember all the music majors, all the theater majors gathering in these dorms, like do- all the dorms, um, because the, the dorms weren't huge. I mean, actually, my my school had really big dorms. They my the the dorms in my um school were four bedroom, four bathroom apartments that were brand new that had just been built that year. They were kind of cunty, actually. Um, there was no like community showers and like, you know, old rinky. It was four bedrooms, four bathrooms, apartments, but that's not the point. The point is, um, I just remember us all sitting on my friend, Jared Randell Jones's bed and watching Legally Blonde and like freaking out. Theater people, y'all are so, y'all are so dirty. That's why you love plasma. Y'all are so... Like, if there was, like, a opera event, opera people wouldn't be like, <laughs> like, and, and again, I'm not, I, 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 I don't, it sounds, it's just so cute. Like, how theater people, y'all are so, like, I just, I just see all y'all fucking I think what I love boys. most about you is that you think opera people are cool, and that is what makes you really I did not say, it. I see, no, see, that's your, I, that's your own insecurity. I never saw opera people are cool. I just said we just don't clamor like, like theater people, though. We're not, we're not, like, <laughs> interesting. I guess you guys don't have the same passion for your art form that we do. You know, we have the same passion. We, we just don't need to put it on front street. We don't need to let the whole oh, world you know. The, oh, you think it's the same passion? That's so interesting. That's interesting. Oh, it's a better passion for sure because we work hard. Shout out to the patron who who pointed out last episode with you and uh, Tia Coffee that Monet's always talking about how how opera people never talk about theater as much as theater people. You talk about opera and sing opera on this podcast more than I have ever spoken about theater. The, ever. Bob, that is a... On you do it on Drag Race, you do it on tour. You're on stage singing. You have a yeah, whole show. Where you, I am singing as part of my act. 
you're 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 on stage singing opera on your shows. You're 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 yeah, doing it uh, on the on the you're singing opera out loud all the time. That, but, 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 even the patrons have signed it off. You sing more than me on this podcast. They've never said that. You, you're the only one saying that. J- Okay, Solomon I need said, y'all, who? y'all, y'all, Monation Baba has whatever you're, I need, I need y'all to comment and sound off, does, we're going to put a poll on the Patreon. Jacob, put a poll on Patreon who right says now. More? We'll have Baba it in the podcast. Monet. Yeah, we're going to have the results at the, at the end of this. Jacob, put the poll. Who And Jacob, don't skew the, don't, don't, don't skew it with your, with no, don't, don't try to, just just don't say, try to, don't try to pull say, Trump. Who you're sings the more on the podcast? You're Baba already Monet. invalidating. You're already invalidating the, no, the, the, I'm just the saying, results. Put it plain. Who sings? You're who already sings more the podcast? invalidating Bob the results or Monet. That's what I want to know. Because you are so. You're good. already trying to validate the results. How? Look at you. This is crazy. How? You're like Bob, Jacob. Don't be skewing the results. Because you're we Trump. all know the sneaky has the boyfriend be doing some shady shit. You're pulling a Trump. You're already denying the results of the of the election. Oh crazy. boy, bye. So oh, I'm posting God. the poll with the caption: Who sings more, Bob or Monet? On the podcast. On, on the podcast. On the podcast. See? See? <laughs> First of all, the answer is you either way. So don't even, no, it's don't not. even have, need to have the conversation. <laughs> I have to say, okay, I've been seeing the clips of Gag City online. And, like, Nicki Minaj is just so mean. There's so many clips of her. <laughs> that is so mean. That is mean. But I think her fans I'm, like that, I'm though. They want I'm that. assuming it's camp. I'm assuming it's camp. I'm sure, but also I think her fan. I think that I think the Barb's want that. Like they want Nikki to give them the mic, and they saw that, and she snatched it from them. Like I think, like they want that. Um, the internet, the internet has lost its mind. Why? Not well. That's not true. But the internet is. Uh, my timeline is literally only Cowboy Carter. It is the only thing I can see. And honestly, I'm low key over it. Like it's, it's too. It's sometimes when, when, when there are, there are two artists who are just pushed so much. I'm like, I can't. I'm not even interested in, in listening now. I, I've not listened to Taylor Swift's last three or four albums. Um, I think the last thing I listened to was the one that had "Look What You Made Me Do" on it. I was uh, working out the other day and I heard a song and I was like, Oh, I like this song. And someone was like, That's Taylor Swift. And I said, like, Had no clue. Had no clue. Um, do you think the internet then, is pushing it, or like I think that your fans are just faggy gay people, queer people who love Beyonce? When I say the internet, I mean my corner. Then I don't think I don't. The internet doesn't have a mind of its own. The internet has an algorithm, and it does things like that, and it just picks on picks up what people like and people what people like you like. So I don't think the internet yeah. has a has it has a bias in and of in and of itself. But I think that uh, because I'm a black gay man, it is like nonstop cowboy Carter. That being said, the so, someone needs to do a research and study on Roxy Andrews and the speed with which she can bang out these crazy stellar looks. I, I I do not know how she made this Cowboy Carter outfit, but it is incredible. In y'all, go to Roxy Andrews' fucking uh I don't know if it's on her Instagram, I don't know if I saw it on Twitter, I don't know. I, I think it was on her TikTok. I saw, it. I saw it. I think I might have saw it on Twitter. It's all over her socials. Roxy Andrews recreated the Cowboy Carter look, and I don't know if she made it. I mean, she makes all of her own drag, but it's just yeah, she she made it herself. Yeah, she makes all of it. She created like she created a couple of Beyonce looks, and I remember she posted when she bought the fabric like four days ago. So in the she made this outfit within the past four days. Yeah, she made it. It's it is beyond remarkable her ability to costume Rox andrews might be one of the best costume costume makers in the history of drag race She's so good and i feel like and i feel like we're not having that conversation she made i feel like we're having the conversation about about utica and q and who else they talk about i feel like utica and q are the one or and nymphia win who else dawn. gets a lot of uh dawn i feel like a lot of the older girls don't get a lot of praise for being great costume designers um she also Roxy Andrews also made um, that gown for Sassy Divine in Miss in Miss Glamorous, which was immaculate as well. Roxy is so she's so good, and people that don't Roxy can do everything. Roxy makes all her, her all her own hair. She makes all of her costumes. She like Roxy is so she is so fucking good 
at costuming and hair and just drag. That's why oh, so many queens fucking. And she's also the nicest fucking person. Roxy Andrews is the sweetest fucking person. You go down there, I twice, for some reason, when I go to fucking Orlando, I forget something and I'm like, hey girl. And she's like, oh yeah, girl, sister. And she's just always willing to help. I fucking love Roxy Andrews so much. She's amazing. She's a beautiful person. Shout out to Roxy Andrews. Let her make it clear. Um, I really like the baby Southern Nights, right? Yeah, Southern Nights. Yeah, she's no, Nights. yeah, she's Southern Nights. I was thinking South Beach, which is here, which is right here in Houston, Texas. Um, I'm in Beyonce's hometown. Maybe Beyonce might be down the street. Maybe I'll. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why my phone is spamming me with Beyonce content because I'm in Houston. You know, inside of T, I was, I, was, I was supposed to do the I was supposed to do the two Houston shows, but I couldn't do it. I'm so sorry you couldn't. I know. Make it. I would have would have been very lovely to be there with you. Um, yeah, it would have been would have been nice. But anyway, shout out to Guy Mick who came by the show last night. She was she was the she was the guest last night. Yeah, and they were trying to they were trying to I was explaining Mick to one of the um because they were trying to like fix the light. They're like, oh, the guest tonight. Is, they do this photo on stage. They're, they just want to like adjust the lights. They're like, the guest tonight. Does anyone know who they're like? Yeah, and they're like, is, is is she like is she like white or black? I said white, but like but like whiter than white. Like as white as you can imagine. Like well, I mean, I was like clown white, like literally clown white. And then they kept being like, "Um, well, okay." And they showed up. And they were like, "Oh, you meant white?" And I was like, "Yeah, bitch. I said clown white." They don't know. What I don't know what means. I was like, "Her, huh?" They don't know what clown white means. Everyone knows what clown white means. Clown white is like the white face of a clown. Like clowns are white in their faces. Clown white is so descriptive that you don't. You, if someone goes, someone is clown white. They paint their faces white. She's like a clown. That is pretty descriptive. Yeah, I think that tells a little more. If you like, she paints her she paints her face white like a clown. If you said she's clown white, I'd be like, what? Okay, wait. Let's take a little break. Let's talk a little more about clown white. Okay. So, and also, people know for so clown white is literally the color of a Ben Nye paint that you use um in theater makeup clown well, not just ben nye it's bit clown white's a color across like ben nye mayron yeah. a lot of them yeah clown white's a pretty common yeah i i use mayron white it's, it's not called it's just called super white well they, they there there are several colors called clown white in several different um companies but yeah clown white is a specific color interesting um like but like like is, is it like is it like vanta black no, it's just white. It's just white foundation. No, I'm saying, but is that the name of it? Like, is that like the name of that color? Like, Vanta Black is a specific color. I, I don't know. Not I, a specific I, shade I of white. The, I don't work in the Pantone world, so I'm not sure um, what the name of the what if if clown white is a specific shade of white, um, as much as it is a descriptor. So I don't I don't really have all the the history on the color of uh, on the etymology or the uh, behind you know. Clown white. You, uh, she, Miss, you, 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 you've been really into linguistics and words and things lately. Well, I mean, I guess you've always been into accents, but I feel like I'm going to recently notice how crazy you are about accents. Well, that's not really linguistics. I know. I'm just talking about in the, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to segue into our topic, Bob. Jesus. Oh. I mean, you could have done one, one better. Nigga, you, you try. Accents. Let's hear, let, let's, let's hear your segue, nigger. Okay, we got to keep talking then, and then <laughs> one, then we'll I'll find a way to to wiggle into it. So, are you ever gonna go sit in the chair? Everyone was like, Monet needs to sit in that chair. No, that, I hate that chair. I hate that chair with every fiber of my being. I hate that chair. <laughs> I hate it. That chair looks like a toy. This looks like it like like it looks like a chair that would be at the kids' table. It looks so tiny. Can you just is it a foot listeners? And so it is. So it looks like a. Um, like a furnace that would be a in your furnace? living room. You know, the, the radiator. No, sorry. It looks like a radiator. There we go. That would be in your living room, except the far right end of the radiator just goes all the way up and then leans back a little bit. And it looks like it is, I'm colorblind, but it looks like it's like tangerine or some sort of a peach, orange, pinky looking color. And it looks uh, plushy, like it's soft to the touch, like 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 a couch or something. Um and the thing, the reason why the chair bothers me is because it looks like a, it looks so, it looks like an ottoman with a chair back on it. And me and a lot of the uh, people who watch our podcast would like for Monet to sit in that chair. 
Um, well, when so we, we find out who Monet is, when we find Monet, we'll make Monet sit on the chair. But I don't know who that is, so I can't do that. Well, sometimes people just say things differently. Monet, Monet, it's just an accent. Well, nigga, Monet. I need you to choose one. It, it changed every every other week. It's a different one with you. One week I'm Monet, then then I'm, then I'm Monet, then I'm Mooney. Choose, well, nigga, make a clear, choice. Accents, accents, and vernacular are fluid, which leads us to our topic today. <laughs> Damn, I ate that. It's Ooh, hot. I'm full. I know you, know, I'm bitch, a, you had my you God. had an appetizer. The totally I entree. couldn't. I couldn't have another bite. I don't know if how I, you could be full from that riggedy riggedy transition. You ever been so full? It hurts. Boy, my. Bye. Ooh, <laughs> I gotta unbutton my pants on that oh, one, honey. No, stand, no, stand up. Show, show us these pants. Stand, stand the fuck up. Stand up. Let's see these pants, Bob. Can we see the pants? You stand up, bitch. Can we see the pants? I'm wearing, I'm, I'm wearing workout shorts from the waist <laughs> down. I'll have you all know. <laughs> I'm not wearing pants. Oh, look at your little skinny leg. Um, so, Bob, what is your relationship with AAVE? Because African, because now I'm saying the words AAVE, I'm like, oh my God, there is Caribbean VE, or is that just called like like Saint Lucian VE? Is that just called so AAVE is a rebranding of Ebonics, right? But so, are Ebonics American only, or can e are Ebonics like native so people? Country? So AAVE is not the way Black people talk everywhere because Black people don't talk the same everywhere. You know what I mean? Right. Um. Obviously, if you've ever met a Nigerian. Uh, especially, especially a FOB Nigerian, um, FOTB Nigerian, um, the way. <laughs> you couldn't wait to the end of the, that was, that was crazy. That was wild. That was wild. Is what is it? What is it? I'll describe it. Once my name is, what, what was that? What was so good? You couldn't wait. I have to know what was so that <laughs> you literally couldn't wait. Is it is it getting cold? <laughs> it's a rice cake. <laughs> so so it's already cold. It's a rice krispie treat. So it's already cold. It is literally not going to get any colder. This is literally me with, with the curry goat girl. Like it, it's just like it was just there. It's just so good. Like I can't resist. I had to. I once did an interview with a drag queen. And we were on camera, and during the interview, this queen, we, it, was, it, was, it was for, like, a big thing. S say it was, their it was, names. Say their names. I, I don't want to say her name, and you'll know why by the end. But we're, we're doing the, the interview, and during the interview, like, we're talking to someone from, like, Entertainment Weekly or something. And she just, like. <laughs> I know who it is, too. And, and I mean, throughout the whole interview, and I kept being like, "You can't <laughs> wait until th this is crazy." Anyway, well, I um, understand any no, and AV. I'm just saying, like, wait, real quick, before I get any bugs and AV, real quick, I want I want to ask you something because the internet is lighting, lighting Jennifer Lopez up right now Girl, over her bodega it order. Is cr oh, wait, just her bitch in general? Well, not just that, everything, but that, but the, but the, but the bodega order has genuinely upset New Yorkers. Now, I'm not from New York City. I lived in New York City for 12 years. I, too, have a bodega order. I'm going to share my bodega order with you all. Um, but, I, but I want you all to hear what Jennifer Lopez's bodega order is and why it apparently upset every single person on the internet. So what's your bodega order? Why look for, why look for uh, I have, What's your bodega I order? I have two. Either I get um, a bacon egg and cheese on a croissant toasted with butter, or when I'm feeling real spicy, I get um, uh, a grilled chicken on a hero with um, light mayo, mayonnaise, and bacon, and, 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 and cheddar cheese. And the bread has to be toasted. Um, and when they cook your chicken, they chop up the chicken and onions together with the cheese, so it makes like a nice little gooey thing. And then they put that on the bread with the bacon in there. Mm. I'm just, I'm not saying that this is like a thing, but I'm just saying like, I know obviously I'm about to be in the least popular group of the world, but like <sighs> mayonnaise can really ruin a meal. But light, light mayo. I don't want it, sl I don't want it sloppy wet with mayo. Just a little, just, just to, just to hydrate the bread. Just a little light mayo on the bread to hydrate it. Why don't you just use like guacamole or a little bit of oil 
or uh, guacamole on my sandwich, or, or ketchup, or mustard, or not mustard, I don't know. But like, people that put ketchup on egg sandwiches, y'all are demented. Criminal. It's disgusting. In Mexico, they put mayonnaise on breakfast sandwiches. That's nasty. Not on breakfast sandwiches. Like, a, like there are certain parts, of, certain neighborhoods in LA where if you get a sausage, egg, and cheese, it's going to have, you have to say no mayonnaise. Because they, they love mayonnaise in Mexico. All right, so here's, here's, here's J-Lo's bodega order that has upset the world. What else that real New Yorkers say? F*** you. <laughs> and what was your go-to order at the bodega? My go-to order at the bodega was ham and cheese on a roll with an orange drink, if you know, you know, and a small bag of chips. That has upset the world. Why? Because they're like, that's not a real motherfucking order. And what's an orange drink? And what small bag of chips? What small bag of chips are you fucking talking about? So for me, my bodega order was, I used to go to uh, Amsterdam. Di- Amsterdam. Show what was it called? Nine- what was the name of that? De- I think it was called Amsterdam. Um, Amsterdam Bodega. Amsterdam Deli. They were, they were, they, they were, get- they were really inventive. <laughs> I would get a sausage, egg, and cheddar cheese on a croissant. Sausage, egg, and cheddar cheese on a croissant. Grill the bread and then grill the the sandwich down as well. I would get a bag of munchos. I munchos are that's a little some of the things. best. No, munchos are these chips that imagine Lay's, like imagine regular salted Lay's, but they're puffy. Oh yeah, but they're but they're but they're still like discs. They're not like puffs. They're not like Cheetos. They're like imagine like the shape of a Pringle or a Lay, but just kind of puffy. Very I'm salty, screaming. very delicious. A Pringle or a Lay. I am screaming. I cannot. <laughs> and they only come in. They only come in one flavor. And then I would get a Calypso, um, like blue lemonade, like you know the Calypso bottles. Mm-hmm. I think they're ginger ale. Um, and if not a Calypso, if I wasn't in the mood for something tart, I would get a cream soda, a Dr Pepper, something like a a, a sweet. But like earthy sweet, not sweet like cocoa. Well, cocoa is kind of earthy sweet, but like uh, cream, root beer, that kind of thing. I'm, I'm and I and I prefer I prefer A and W root beer. And I also or or I also went on a, a pretty big kick where I, mug is not bad either. And there was a, a while where I was real mug root beer. Oh, I'm not a root beer girly. And then I was really into uh, ginger beer for a while too. Uh, ginger beer is too spicy. Why is it spicy? I see spicy um, and too pricey. Um, okay. So my point was saying, yes, I know I know about Ebonics in America, but I'm like, but I, I guess I already answered my question because in St. Lucia, we didn't call, like, we didn't call it Ebonics, like, when we spoke. But again, St. Lucia is a black country. Like, countries that, like, for example, in, in the UK, do they call how, how black people speak, do they call that Ebonics? Well, in Jamaica, they say Patois, so they have a name for what they're saying, even though Jamaica's a black country. But Patois is not, it's kind of like, it's the bridge between the language spoken there and the English. So it's, so, so uh, every country has Patois. Like Belize has There's Patois. another language, there's another language in Jamaica they speak outside of English? Yeah, I th- oh no, maybe, maybe, maybe not Jamaica, but in like Belize, right? Patois is like this like English, Spanish, French. In St. Lucia, Patois is... Spanish, I mean, um, English and French together. Like in Trinidad, they have patois. It's it, so, it patois just means like English and another thing like blended together. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. But also, clearly, it, black people in different parts of the country of America obviously speak differently. For example, we were discussing right. the word munch on the last podcast, and munch is a word that is quite frankly too young for me. I, m- I don't think munch was out when I was in high school, and it's certainly no one in the South was saying it. Really? So I heard. Yeah, we we in the south there's no, there's no you're not there's no no one's saying munch especially back in like the year 2000. I don't I don't even know if the word munch is before the year 2000, let alone Yeah, um, it's later in life. Like munch is a munch is a not newer. I would say munch, munch probably got circulated when like I when I when I was in high school I, I I heard the term munch or maybe college. But yeah, they there there was certainly there was certainly no one in Georgia in the early 2000s or even up to 2008 saying munch. Got you know it. what I mean? So like none of my friends would have ever said that. Um and but I and and, and I don't think that AAVE and someone's going to again, me and my are not experts. Take everything we want to say with a grain of salt. We're not linguistics experts. We're not linguists. 
we are not um you know vernacular or lexicon um geniuses by any stretch of the imagination um but there is certainly a I'm, and this is problematic but there is a <clears throat> um way to sound black i do think there is a way to sound black there are things that people can say and you will sound like a black person for example um i think that anyone who probably hears me talking probably can assume that i'm black and that i'm gay like i just i sound gay i don't think you sound gay though you definitely sound black like if if i heard you, you I, don't ever you think I sound straight? I don't think it sounds straight, but you don't sound gay. You sound neutral. Like someone like someone like uh Patty, Patty sounds gay. Patty has a gay ass voice. Like Mateo sounds gay. But you just sound neutral. What do you sound? Do you sound gay? I don't know how I sound. Uh, you tell me. I, I I don't know. I don't think I sound particularly gay. I, I I think I think I think I think I think I sound neutral New York black. I think that you sound, first of all, I think you sound Caribbean, even though you were fighting me on this for a very long time. You sound Caribbean. You do sound New York, but through a Caribbean uh, lens, for sure. It's going through a Caribbean filter, and then it comes out New York on the other side. Because you don't, you don't sound like a New Yorican. You don't sound like, uh, you don't sound like someone from the Bronx. You don't sound yeah. like Cardi B. Yeah. You don't sound like one of those. You don't sound like uh, uh, Bernie Sanders. You sound like someone who fucking eats from East Flatbush. Someone who, who eats beef patties growing up. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, wait, Jacob, I have a question. Jacob, do you think Bob sounds, like, do you think Bob sounds gay? Or do you think, like, how, how does he sound to you? I mean, I think there's a spectrum. So I think he does. But if the spectrum is, like, Patty and Mo and Mateo at, like, 10 versus, like, straight frat bro at, like, zero, I would put Bob at, like, a six. A six? Okay. Yeah, if, if 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 Ross Matthews is a ten and <laughs> Jason Momoa is a one, I would say I'm around a six. I would say you're a I would say you're a four. That's that make that means that sounds straighter than gay. That's crazy to me. I I, I okay four point five. You're like right. You're right in the middle. Neutral to me. Like is you just sound neutral. It doesn't sound straight. It doesn't sound gay. You sound like right in the middle. Well, you all sound off in the comment section. Do I sound straight? Do I sound? My mother also thinks that I people don't know I'm gay. My mom thinks people. My mom thinks people don't even know that I'm gay, which is wild to me. Looking at you, you is, you look so gay. You have a very gay what, look. That's what I think. But my mom's like, nah, not you. And I'm like, I don't know if this is you. I, I don't know. I don't. That's not my experience. I in my experience, I've had a lot of people in my life uh, assure me how gay I am on site. Also, I want to point out that we are we have 21 minutes. Uh, we have posted the 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 poll 21 minutes ago. It is 62 percent Monet and 37 percent Bob. So it's not looking good for you, man. We'll see. I throw that in the air. Um, Jacob, I'm from zero from Jason Momoa to Ross Matthews, zero to ten. Where am I? Um, I would say you're probably a five or a six as well. Hmm, interesting. I think Monet probably sounds a little bit gayer than me, but I don't sound like I don't. I do. I'm on the gayer side of five. I'm six and up. Why are you? Why are you getting angry at me? Shaking your head and being being all doing all your little ebonics with your face with your head. You know, I am a happy cat lady. Actually, Bob, you know, I'm thinking about. I think I might get a second Sphinx. Oh, what a bad idea! <laughs> so the least I could do is feed my little kitty with the best cat food money can buy. So my cat's old food used to stank, and I used to dread having to open that container because then it would literally, the entire room would smell like the cat food. And I could see her also losing interest until we found Smalls. My cat prefers Smalls way more than the previous cat food. And honestly, when you put it like by side by side, it just looked like the Smalls looks 100% better. And this podcast is sponsored by Smalls. Now, if you're a listener to this show, I want you to know that my niece, Colleen, cannot live without small. Small's cat food is protein-packed recipes made with preservative-free ingredients you'd find in your fridge. That's why veterinarians.org rate Small's 10 out of 10 for ingredient quality. You know, I'm not a cat person, but I am a proud cat aunt, and I'd like to make sure that my niece is getting the best high-quality food she deserves. It wasn't for me. She'd be eating kibbles over there, okay? After making the switch to Small, 78% of cat owners reported that their cats had shinier and softer fur. I can tell you, Colleen is the furriest 
a hairless cat I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. I can literally confirm. And that is a big deal. Now is the time to make the switch to Smalls. Head to smalls.com slash rivalry and use code rivalry at checkout for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use our code, y'all. Rivalry for 50% off your first order. One last time, that's promo code rivalry for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. Home Chef is not just another fish in the meal kit sea. They are the gourmet catch you've been dreaming of. Say goodbye to swiping left on lackluster meals and swipe right on the one brand that'll make your taste buds swoon. Whether you prefer classic meal kits with pre-portioned ingredients and easy instructions, speedy recipes, ready in less than 30 minutes, oven-ready kits with pre-chopped ingredients, or quick microwave meals that assemble in minutes, Home Chef has you and your entire family covered for delicious meals without the hassle. Listen, y'all, I did the Home Chef for a really, really, really long time, and it was great. The meals were fresh. I felt like I was in my um, Emerald Lagasse stage. I felt like I was giving, like, Rachel Ray of the Bay. I really thought I was doing my big one, and I loved Home Chef, and if I was home more, I would do it even more. For a limited time, Home Chef is offering our listeners 18 free meals plus free dessert for life and, of course, free shipping on your first box. Go to homechef.com slash rivalry. That's homechef.com slash rivalry for 18 free meals and free desserts for life. You heard that right. Homechef.com slash rivalry. It must be an active subscriber to receive free dessert. Are you looking for new looks that help you revamp your style? Rakuten is an online shopping platform that rewards you for shopping. Rakuten gives you cash back when you shop at thousands of brands across almost every category, from apparel to shoes and to home essentials and even more. Rakuten is the smartest way to save money when you shop. Get cash back at over 3,500, I'm going to say it again, 3,500 stores across every single category, including fashion, beauty, electronics, home essentials, travel, dining, and so much more. Membership is free and it's easy to sign up. I love it because it helps me get great deals on my favorite brands like Fenty Beauty, Crocs, Adidas, all the things. Start all of your shopping at Rakuten. Your cashback adds up. Rakuten has 15 million members who are already saving. Get the free Rakuten app and download the free browser extension. Also, girls, Rakuten finds you the best deals, sales, and coupons. They do the work of searching for coupon codes so you save time and money. Cashback rates change daily. Start all of your shopping at Rakuten.com or get the Rakuten app to start saving today. Your cashback really adds Heads up. Spring is in full bloom. Are your finances blooming too? With the Chime Secured Credit Builder Visa Credit Card, it is easy to start building credit with everyday purchases and regular on-time payments with no annual fees or interest. And if your credit score grows, so could your opportunities for lower rates on loans like for a car or a home. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card has no annual fees, interest, or credit check to apply. Use it anywhere Visa Credit Cards are accepted. Build credit using your own money. Set up a qualifying direct deposit, sign up for SpotMe, and Chime will spot you up to your limit when you make a credit card purchase or cash withdrawal that exceeds your balance. Access 60 thousand plus fee-free atms that's more than the top three national banks combined easily find one near you with the chime app use chime to pay anyone chime members or not and cash out your money fee free with chime secure credit card you can start improving your credit score right away get started today at chime.com slash rivalry that's chime.com slash rivalry chime feels like progress the chime credit builder visa credit card is issued by the bank corp na or Stride Bank NA. Members FDIC, spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Out of network ATM withdrawals and OTC advances, fees may apply. Terms and conditions apply. Go to chime.com disclosure for details. Hey y'all, it's your favorite siblings, Bob and Monet, and we have some upcoming dates that we would love to see y'all at. Please do not forget to come see us on May 5th at the Netflix is a Joke Comedy Festival in Los Angeles, California. And then we're doing Sibling Rivalry Live in San Diego on June 7th. A summer of siblings. Sounds fabulous to me. So, <laughs> my thing is this. Like, I... Sometimes I don't realize the things that I'm saying and how quote-unquote black or how quote-unquote white what I'm saying sounds because it's just how I talk. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I didn't realize that something I'm saying, someone like that sounds white or that sounds black. It just it just low key never uh, occurred to me. 
which is weird because when I grew up, I had people being like, you say, you think you white? You sound like you white. And I was like, do I? Yeah. Do I? I never had that. And then when I got, um, but then when I got older, um, apparently I, I, I think it's because maybe, maybe it's because I left a black community and I went into uh, New York City. And I, I mean, I lived, I lived in, I lived in a lot of different communities. I lived in like uh, Middle Eastern neighborhoods. I lived in, I don't even know what I would consider Upper West Side where I was at. That's like a, it was pretty mixed over there. And then I moved yeah. into a Dominican neighborhood. Well, when you lived, when you lived in Minnesota for that thing, did they, did they think you sounded white? No, because they, that, but that's because they sound, they are white, white. Like Minnesota, right. or like for, or for sure in Minnesota, they're talking a lot differently than I, but also when I moved to to be fair, also, I had a much thicker Southern accent when I moved to Minnesota. Like I used to have a Southern accent, like a thicker, a thick Southern accent. Okay. Now my accent is very. What to say? You very still have white. one, it's just not as thick. No, I do have a I do have a southern accent, but I used to have a very thick southern accent. And I th- we we post some old videos on on the, on the Patreon of me when I had when I when I first moved to New York City. Y'all, when it I was tell you when Bob is on his family, this nigga he has a fucking straw hanging out his mouth, and he'd be like, yeah, yeah, what, wait, what do y'all, what do y'all, what do y'all, uh, what do y'all doing down there? I'm like, what the fuck are you? T-? And what you got hanging out your mouth? A uh, curry goat and fucking, um, fucking, yeah, beef patty. <laughs> what? But like, hey, like, hey, ma, what y'all doing out there? Get me on. No, no. First of all, I I call my mother ma. I don't go. Hey, ma. it's not. Hey, ma. I say, I would say, ma, what y'all doing over there? Ma, what y'all doing? Can't me on. I'll go, can't me on. Can you come downstairs, please? To please. Me, to me, don't sound like that. Like, Ma, what y'all doing out there? I say, Ma, what y'all doing down there? Ma, what y'all doing down there? Ma. Also, it's Ma. I call her Ma. I know. Ma. I, mean, I can't get that. Ma. My voice can't do that. It's not Ma. It's Ma. Well, here's my question. So, like, so I guess growing up, I didn't ha- I, I, I didn't have the white talk thing. And I think that, I think when I, when I, when I lived in St. Lucia, because it's a black country, I wasn't aware of it. But coming to America, like the adjustment of leaving St. Lucia and being a young kid in America, I learned AAVE, like just from going to school and like having friends and like having a black American experience. But before that, I didn't like, like, for, like I said before, like I did the, the word, the word nigga was not part of my vernacular growing up. We just, you don't say, like that word is just not something that exists in the Caribbean. Like y'all, other, other Caribbeans, correct me if I'm wrong. Like it, we, we didn't say it in school. I didn't hear it in the community ever. When I moved to the States and I like, I started speaking AVE. <clears throat> That's when, like that, that became that was introduced into me as a as a word. So why did you start saying it if you didn't grow up saying it? Because well, I was, I was also nine years. I was ten years old, right? So I'm still very impressionable. I'm 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 I'm, I'm, a, I'm in fucking fifth grade with other other badass New York City kids calling me niggas left, right, and center. So it just it it, it came part of my came part of my dialect. Interesting. Um, I definitely grew up in it. I have I live in a household where everyone says it. I mean, and I mean everyone. Wait, hold on the, one the, second. The, Let me just. Uh... Okay. The older people, the younger people, like my mom, my my uncle, my my nephew. Like I said it as a child, like as a single like how old? digit child. Like, I I don't ever remember not saying it. Like, so you mean like at like five years old, you just, you you just niggering around? I wasn't niggering, but I was niggering. You know what I mean? I do. I do. I do specifically remember telling my mother, um, like pointing at Justin and saying, "Tell this nigga to leave me alone." That's crazy. That, that's just so that's young. Like, and my mom was like, "Leave your brother alone." <laughs> yeah. And then I guess when was the conscious effort to change it? Like, did, did people think that the, that that the word ebonics sounded bad? Like, why was there like a conscious effort to change it from ebonics to aave? Does aave? Well, I think. So so let's read the def the, what what dictionary.com says AAV is black English is all is also known as African American vernacular English amongst other names as discussed in the extensive historical usage notes in its entry. This form of English is a complex of course as standard English um and has many of its own distinct features. This is the dictionary.com has an article called The Complexity of African American Vernacular English. Um and go ahead. PBS said eventually the term African American vernacular English was introduced as yet another synonym for the speech of most blacks in America. However, unlike Ebonics, 
Black English or AAVE never explicitly referred to the linguistic legacy of African of the African slave trade beyond the United States. Interesting. Um, and it also says here that uh, if if you say it's a language, though, you likely hold the Creolist hypo, um, hypothesis view that AAV originated from a Creole spoken out of the uh, southern plantations before the Civil War. A Creole is a full language um, that develops from pidgin, a uh, super simple language created between two groups who needed to communicate but didn't have a language in common. Have you heard of pidgin? There, there's people on TikTok who speak pidgin. I've heard it, and I've, I feel like I've known what it is, but now I can't remember what it is. I mean, I don't speak pidgin. I, I don't know anyone. I don't know anyone who speaks pidgin. Pigeon. But I've heard of pidgin, and I've heard people speak pidgin, for sure. You remember, you remember, you ever seen that clip of that old, old, old talk show, and he's talking to Richard Pryor, and he's asking him about, like, about um, speaking jive? You know what I'm talking about? And he, and, and, and the guy, maybe, he goes, maybe. he goes, like, he, he goes, like, <laughs> the white host of the television show, he goes, what is it, Amante? What is it, he did there? And Richard Pryor is like, what? Like, he's basically saying, like, you should understand this, Richard Pryor, because you're black and you speak jive. And Richard Pryor is like, that's not how I talk. That's very interesting. I, I've not seen that, but it does sound quite interesting, though. Um, well, here's the thing. Yeah. So, like, with fucking, like, drag slang and shit, there is a lot of crossover with what is what they're calling drag slang, but which is also a lot borrowed from just queer black and brown people who have introduced even and, and there was this girl with a TikTok who she she she, she cuz a lot a lot of like queer black and trans uh vernacular english i want to say has been taken by straight black people and they think that they've introduced something where it really originated with black and brown trans people in the queer community and so there's this Wait, say like that again like things that black and brown, specifically trans people, have introduced into slang, into the and into this and 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 into language, oftentimes gets taken by straight black folk, and they don't even know that what they're saying are has derived from black and brown trans people. Things like shade and reading and all that stuff. There are so many straight dudes and straight people using that language, and I'm like. It's just so interesting to see like um um dudes uh, straight dudes like straight dudes like people like Charlemagne the God and people like using things like oh yeah that was shady yeah she read her down yo and I'm like it's just so interesting that they don't know where this language comes from that they're using so freely. How do we know they don't know? Maybe Char- I mean Char- I feel like Charlemagne probably knows. I, I mean Charlemagne is an example. That I'm, I'm talking about in general in in, in in broader strokes. Got it. Yeah. I wonder how cyclical all of that really is. Like, I wonder how much of this goes between, like, like I wonder how much of this this uh, language and vernacular was is created in groups of mixed uh, demographics. You know what I mean? In um, like shade and reading like, and stuff like that. You think that came from mixed? No, no, not shade and reading. Not okay. shade and reading, but like other things. Like, I wonder how much of the, of the stuff that people are saying is just from like groups of friends who are both gay and straight and trans and cis and non-binary. Mm-hmm. And it came out of this whole, you know, the black experience as opposed to specific demographics of black. And obviously there are certain things that come from, you know, queer spaces and from straight place spaces and from, you know, cis spaces and from women's spaces and from men's spaces. Um, but it is interesting to see uh, people say shady or reading or, Paying dust or uh, that I do find incredibly interesting. Yeah, and uh, like she paid her dust. If someone says they paid you dust, I've ever I've heard like straight ago, like he like he paid me dust, and I'm like, like <laughs> but also is paying you dust come? From this? I I assume it's from from the uh, the black queer community, but I don't know. Is it? <laughs> you know what? We, do, we we should ask Q. Q would probably know. Maybe you think Q is uh, one of the uh, pioneers of uh, of, of black queer linguistics? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, a lot of folks online were really excited that you and Naomi mentioned uh, Q's, and it's and, you know I, I gotta be I'm I'm one episode behind on Drag Race, but it seems like Q does it either when she's like trying to make a bit. It's it's like her it's her version of playing Jane going. Um, or when she's like around other, when she's around black people, 
oh no, girl, they crazy. <laughs> Which, again, and I want to say this. I am not saying that Q cannot talk like that. I am not policing how Q can talk. I am not saying that said Q it. is not allowed. Stand by it. There's not allowed to do that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it's off-putting to me as someone watching the show. Q can, but she can, she can walk up to the main stage and call RuPaul the N-word. That's her prerogative. She can do whatever she wants to. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> I'm right. For me, as a viewer of Drag Race, and you give Q permission. <laughs> so you are giving Q permission. Yes, I give Q permission to do whatever she wants with her voice and her language. She can say whatever she wants. That's but crazy. as for me, it's all putting to me. I don't want to. It's 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 not pleasing to me. But she can do whatever the fuck she wants. It's not pleasing to me and my homegirls. <laughs> I, I I can't speak to my homegirls. So I'm talking to right here. Maybe Bob loves it. I don't fucking know. But it's just not pleasing to me. And that's she can do whatever she wants. I don't love it. I, I haven't given much thought to it. Um, but I also kind of grew up in a place where there were like some white people, not a lot of white people, and some of them kind of talk like that. So maybe just I'm just so used to being like, oh yeah, that's some white folks be talking like that. And and like I, mean, I grew up in obviously I grew up in a black neighborhood. I, I grew up in I grew up one one county east of the blackest. City in America, apparently. Fulton. Um, what is it? Fulton Street County? What is it? Fulton, Georgia, or yeah. Fulton something, Georgia. Um, South Fulton. South Fulton. Um, so there were just some white people in our neighborhoods who, so, I mean, most of them did not speak like that, but there were some white folks who hung out with us and they they kind of talk like that. And we're just like, oh, yeah, that's just that's just kind of how that person talks. It just, I was a kid, so I just really wasn't thinking much about it. And as I got older, a lot of them, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them just kind of stopped talking like that. I think because for they're me, basically opting out of the marginalization of what it means to sound that way. Exactly. And that's what it is for me. I think that's the thing that, because I grew up, like we've talked about this before, I grew up uh, in my neighborhoods. There, they, we had a lot of white kids that went to our school and everything. It's New York City, and they spoke like that, but it wasn't. There wasn't a code switching aspect, right? Like it was like these people who grew up in Vanderveer Projects, who were like that's how they talk. Like there was not a. It's. It, I think it's a code switching aspect of it that is bothersome to me. Like the fact that she just she's she's just use she, just doing it when it's convenient for her, being like, oh my, that crazy girl, oh my, oh honey child, blah, blah, blah. and yeah, because you know, like I think it's a code switching aspect that is the issue for me. That the people that so grew up with someone like Woe Vicky, who's talking like that all the time. Who's Woe Vicky? Woe Vicky is this uh, influencer who's like who's like now her whole thing is like she's like super duper Christian, and Woe Vicky kind of went went viral because she was kind of she's kind of like a bad Barbie. Mm. Got it. Let me see, let me see if I can find a Woe Vicky clip. Woe Vicky. This is how well Vicky talks. Hold on, let me. I gotta find a clip of her. Well, why Bob is saying that? So I think it's a coaching thing that she can just pick and choose when she wants to use it when it's convenient for her in the parameters of, in, in the parameters of the show. But when, but then in, in other aspects, she clearly is not using it. When someone Maya is saying to her New Yorkian, and she's acting like she can't say the words New Yorkian because it's so hard to do. I'm like, but bitch, you were just like, ooh, honey, cut, he get, but you can't say New York. That self, that's the little, the little parts of it that bother me. Um. So yeah. You got in a lot of trouble because of saying the N-word, correct? Yeah. How, did you feel like you've taken accountability for it, or do you feel like... Oh, yeah. So when I was in high school, all I had was black friends. And mm -hmm. I used to say the word around them all the time, and they didn't mind, they didn't care. When I had started going viral, mm -hmm. it was like my ex, his family... They were so like, you hear how she sounds. And yeah. Here's her apparently, and here's her apparently not doing the... The accent, hold on. Try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Say I'm from Atlanta, but without the accent. I'm from Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> it still sounds the same. Yeah. Say, for, for reference, can you So say the famous thing of her, she was, it was a bit of her count. She was like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Um, and that's just like kind of how she was like talking. So, and apparently she's like one of those like folks who goes around, who went around saying the N word. And, you know, we didn't have, have a lot of people who were not black. We had a few like Latino people, mm -hmm. guys specifically who would say the N word when I, growing up, but there just was not a big like Latino community. And were people upset about Latino. that? Was it weird? Uh, yeah. Yes and no. It honestly kind of all depended on the context and 
because I know apparently in New York, all the Latino people are saying it. Mm-hmm. Which, which that was just that was just that just wasn't a thing in the South, and especially there were no, Atlanta has a very large Vietnamese population. None of the well, Vietnamese people said no, it. Yeah, that'd be wild. And the white people didn't really say it either. Like, like the, I mean, white, there are some white people in the South who would say the N word, but they but they ain't no ain't no GGA on the end of that motherfucker. Well, I guess, I mean? the, I've heard some hard ERs growing up for sure. Well, the question is, is it weird? Because this person, well, Vicky, it sounds like that is her experience. It, it, it sounds like the people I, I was saying that I that like grew up having that experience. So is it is it weird for her to, ha- to is it weird for well, Vicky to you to speak using AAVE when that is her lived experience? I mean, I don't know. I mean, did you did you were there, did you meet any white people in St. Lucia who had, who had St. Lucian accents? Yes. I knew white and people, the, I knew Asian people that have that that bitch that's that speak better Creole and speak better Pashtun than me. And is that weird? No, because that's their experience. Like no one is walking around and being like, it, it it is there. That's how they talk. Well, you guys have a very different relationship to race than we do here in the states, right? Obviously, yeah. You know what I mean. Um, and I just remember growing up when that when, whenever there were certain people who were not black who spoke like black people, it didn't really uh trigger ring any alarms but maybe that's because we were all children and i hadn't yeah. thinking about it much but as i've gotten older it does ring alarms because there are there are also because there are way less people i think that a lot of people grow out of sounding black mm-hmm. i think a lot of people grow out of sounding black mm-hmm. you know what i mean um how old is well a lot of she, non she, a she lot of older non-black people, people. A lot of non-black people grow out of town black. Say what? Is Will Vicky an older? Is, is she an older lady or is she young? No, Will Vicky's like in her twenties. Okay, maybe early thirties. Maybe got it. Um, she's really pro- she's problematic for a ton of reasons. Got it. She's problematic for a ton of reasons outside of just saying the n word and and peddling uh the cultism of Christianity. And she's oh God, also she's a Christian. A, I, her whole thing is she's like a Christian influencer now. Got it. And and her and her whole thing is also um. I think she. I'm pretty sure she's a pretty intense Zionist. Um, so that well, Vicky has a lot going on. Well, Vicky has a lot going on. Um, so, so, so we want to flag this thing, but I found it to be very interesting. This teacher sparked a debate on Twitter. Wait, before we go on to the teacher, I ask you one quick question. Tell me, what's up with if you say the N word and you're not black? The public response to that. What's up with it? What do you mean? What's up with it? Like, like. Like, like, is that person done forever? Like, what do you think? I think it depends on the person's response. I think when, if you are a non-black person, you say the N-word, if you, how you come out, like, for example, well, Vicky's like, well, that's just how I talk. It's how I said it. I grew up with my friends saying it. But if you are someone like, who is this? Like, like, didn't, didn't, didn't Lisa Lampanelli say it? And she came out and she apologized. I, I, I know she said, I don't remember what her response was. I don't remember her response either. But like for, or like Joe Rogan, if you like, there's no apology and it just feels like, well, I said it, whatever. Then, then yeah, we're, we're like, fuck you. But if you, I don't know. But I, when I know, when a white person says it, I've made up my mind who you are. Like you can apologize, but I made up my mind who you are. And now I can't unsee you that way. Like if you're, if you're just white person, I'm just saying the N word. I know who you are. And that's probably unfair. Like whatever. Cause you may have made a mistake, whatever. That's not my problem. I have made up my mind who you are, that you're a white person that says the N word. And we can't do that. I think that um, if you say the N-word and you're not a black person, or if you do any offense, quite frankly, um, and the demographic that that offends does not, if, if if some of those people do not forgive you, then that just is what it is. And you have to accept it. And people can bring it up as many times as they want to. Because you said it, so now they can say that you said it. Right. You've introduced it to the table. You know what I mean? And we had, uh, like, we you and I had Eureka on our podcast years ago. You remember that at at Sony, at Sony Hall, yeah. And we were like, "So what's up with this? Like, what, like, what, like, what was, what was, what was that? What that was?" <laughs> and that was before we ever did. Uh, before we ever did, we're here. Um, that was years before we we're here. I'm like, I cannot believe how long ago that was. Can I tell you a story? What I've never said this out loud to anyone. So I'm gonna say, um, please bleep out this name. Um, a friend of ours. Um. <laughs> We were, <laughs> we were, we were in a gig in in Columbus, Ohio, 
And then it's right when Bodak Yellow was, re- not when it wasn't, just, but Bodak was such a big song. And I don't know if I'm making this up, if I misheard, but we were in the car and we were, and we were, and we were all, the, we were all just going in, we were singing the song, it was so big. And there's a part in the song that she says the N word. And it, I, who is she? Cardi B. The friend? Oh, they said Bodak Yellow. I was like, Bodak Yellow is. Yeah, Cardi B says it, but we were all singing it. And I know for a fact that he that they were singing it too. And in my mind, I can't make up in my mind. Did I make up that he said it, or did he say it? Well, that's a pretty big allegation. So you've you've made the allegation now. I Why we call him? say it again. We should not call him. No, <laughs> no, no. no but, and mercy. like that is something that has been in my heart since that was what five years ago. And I'm like, I'm like, and it, and it happened in a moment. And I remember looking back like. I went to a uh, Kendrick Lamar concert, mm-hmm. and it was me, Michelle Buto, Sashir Zameda, Alana Glazier, a couple like a lot of funny ladies, mm-hmm. and we were all sitting there. But th- anyway, this story has nothing to do with them. That was just me name dropping. But what happened was, we, if you ever go to a concert, uh, you especially a rap concert. You might be shocked to find that most of the people at the rap concert are from the mountains of Caucasus. It is mostly white people. And also, the closer you get to the stage, the whiter the seats are. I've noticed this at, 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 the, at, the, at, the, at the few rap concerts I have been to. Um, also, the biggest consumers of hip-hop, the biggest demographic that consumes hip-hop is white people. Did you know this? I did not know that. Yes, white men are the largest consumers of hip hop in America. Um, so Kendrick Lamar's with their rapping, and I'm telling you, it was odd to me because the people in the arena, it was at Barclays, were rapping every lyric. And I was like, and I feel like me and Sashir were both sitting, or maybe me and Michelle Buto. Me and Michelle Buto were both sitting side by side. We were both like, oh, we're certainly outnumbered here. <laughs> well, at like a uh, Megan Thee Stallion concert that's happening this summer, like Megan has a, she has niggas running all up and through her songs. And I'm sure a lot of them are predominantly going to be white folk there. So like, how do, how do they restrain themselves? Or are they just saying it? Are they just there like at, at, at Nikki's concert, at, at, at fucking Gag City, are the white people, they just uh, or they're just like, I need to, and, 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 and like, are they? Like, I don't know. Have you heard Killer Mike's new song? Hello, my nigga. Hello, my hello, my nigga. No. Hello, my nigga. Anyway, no. let's let's talk about this 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 document from this teacher. Yeah. So this this teacher on X, um, she well to her class, she's banning thirty two words from being spoken in her classroom, um, and she said the gibberish some of you choose to use. Is improper English. Okay, let's read, let's read the whole thing. Let's read the whole thing. And just to be clear, by the way, we do not know anything about the teacher. We don't know if this teacher is a man, a woman, black, white, young, old. We don't even know if this is a real letter. She said this, this. is just something that's circulating on X. Um, the gibberish some of you choose to use is improper English. There are you're not reading the whole thing. No, I'm I'm reading the thing that she that she said before. There are many ways to there there are many ways to articulate what you need to say without using slang. Please, wait, you're not reading the whole thing. Start from the beginning. Oh, oh, I, I was reading the thing before. Um, if you're on the very top, if you're these words sayings are prohibited in my classroom. If you're caught <laughs> using these words, you will write a short essay explaining why you chose to use these words in an academic setting to express yourselves. There are many ways to articulate what you need to say without using slang. Please know that using slang in an academic setting can diminish your your capability to become a successful writer. More often than not, the way you speak is the way that you will write. The gibberish some of you choose to use is improper English and sometimes inappropriate. For an academic setting, this is an educational institution, and you will carry yourself as scholars in my classroom. Here's the well, first one. Of my question is: one of my questions is this: like, so is this? Is this? Are you the same teacher who's handing them uh, fucking Huckleberry Finn? Where they're where they're, where they're speaking in busted, broken, raggedy English? Right, bitch. Anyway, so, so these are the words. The number one is bruh. Number, two. I'll do. I'll, let's just let's switch off every five. Okay, bruh, standing on business. Oh, we ski, ski. You ate that up. That's cap. 
What's up, gang? Bet. Oh, my God, Miss T. Oh, God. Oh, my mama. Oh, my dad. <laughs> Riz. What's up, G. Wade? In the cut with my twin. Just vibe. Yeah. On bro. On hood. Gang, gang. Nigga. On me. On the set. Freak you mean. Period. Uh, Munya, Munyan, I don't even know what that is. Yeah, big dog, motion, wait, motion and or big motion. Mm. Uh, just vibe, twin. Uh, what's up, twin? Nah, it's giving. Okay, I'm old because some of these I don't know what mun. I don't know what Munyan is. I don't know what motion. I don't know what motion means. I I I I, I don't know what motion. I know big motion. Like that's like like that's like the move. Okay. Uh, it, uh, what other ones? Were, those are the ones I really didn't know. Yeah. Um, but you know, this seems really inappropriate to me. I agree. I don't like. I think that like you like like you have to acknowledge that this is how kids speak. I think there is a precedent you can set. Like, hey, when we write our papers in school, I would like us to blah blah blah. But to say that you are banned from using this to me, that's inappropriate, and I don't think that that's fair. Like, it is. Like, slang is going to... Slang has existed since forever. Kids are going to use slang, and you can set a precedent that in scholarly articles or in, or in papers you're writing for for academic merit, you have to use a certain set of thing. But to say that you cannot use these words, they're banned, I think that's wild. I think that's inappropriate. Well, it depends on what you're writing for. If you're asking a student to write about their feelings, about their experience, they should use their word and how they speak. But if you are teaching grammar... And it is a lesson on grammar. Then I think there's nothing wrong with being like, "Hey guys, this is grammatically incorrect." Just so you guys know, I'm just teaching you grammar. I'm t- I'm, a, I'm an English teacher. I'm teaching you English, and this is where a comma goes. This is how you use a preposition. This is how you. This is this is where this is what a pronoun is. Which apparently we really need to teach the world what pronouns are over and over and over again because people don't understand what pronouns are. Um, so I think if you're teaching grammar, then yes. But if you just want to write about their life and their experience, they should be able to use their words, their language, and their lexicon yeah especially like when you like have kids writing like autobiographical like autobiographical things and you're writing about like your summer vacation and stuff like using these words is acceptable I, and i i i think it's it's really insane to say you cannot use these words at all at all but that's wild to me because you know a lot of the words that shakespeare and and shakespeare and, uh, they were just making shit up using slang that is now standard english yeah wild so why can't the words that other people are using be also considered in English? Like, it, it, I mean, I, I challenge any of you to go back and read The Color Purple. You know, it's a really beautiful book and it's written. The first couple of chapters are written completely grammatically and correctly on purpose, obviously. But it is a brilliant piece of work. A brilliant You know, Bob, you're a brilliant piece of work. Piece of work. That's, that doesn't sound like a compliment. You're a, you're a piece of work. I said you're a... Br- See, you're picking and choosing what? You niggas say I said you're a brilliant piece of work. How is that How is that not a compliment? You're a brilliant piece of work. Nigga, you better, you better take and twist and mold this into an insult. I can't. I'm done. I'm not giving any more, any more compliments on the motherfucking podcast. Okay. I, I, I didn't ask you for well, anything. So. And, and you won't be getting any more. So, so, we're, so we're, all, we're both on the same page. Monet, you're a brilliant piece of work. Let's just put it that way. Let's let's go and look at the poll and see if Monet is going to accept the results or if she's going to somehow accuse me and Jacob of skewing the truth. So uh, uh, on the poll, we have a poll that says, who sings more on the podcast? Bob or Monet? We're recording right now. We need you to settle this. We have 1,343 votes. Monet has 60 Four percent of the vote. Bob has thirty-five percent of the vote. So, Monet, do you now accept that it is a general consensus that you sing way more than I do on the podcast, and most people think that? I don't know that to be true. See, wow, <laughs> y'all. I told you, Monet's gonna pull a Trump. She's not gonna accept the results. I told y'all, Mo. This is it's a, this is a last. Warning to everyone in Mo Nation. By the way, we've closed our borders. You can't come over to Bobblehead wow. Nation no more. You, are, you need to go find. You're giving America. You need to go find refugees. Do not come. 
Do not come. You need to find refuge somewhere else because the bobbleheads, we are, we are, we, we took the last few scragglers that we could from O Nation. But now y'all need y'all maybe y'all can go over to Jada S's Hall, wherever she's at. Maybe y'all can go to Trixie, uh, the Trix Trixie, the Bar Barbies, whatever she calls hers, uh Katya, whatever she calls her people. Maybe y'all can go over to the Priyankas. What's my names? But y'all can't come here no more. First of all, I, 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 it's comical to me that you think Monation Nation people will settle for the fucking, the fucking mayhem and anarchy that exists over there in Bobblehead land. It is confusion. It is chaos over there, okay? Okay, and again, I am not saying that we are a perfect society, that we are a perfect community. But what I, what I will say is that we are a happy community and we are working together. And we don't, there is no, this is, this is not an authoritatianship, okay? This is not, this is not an but now, you, don't, you don't even accept, you don't even accept democracy. We voted. The people voted. And you're like, I don't know. Can you start by accepting democracy and saying that most of our listeners think that you sing more than I do on the podcast? Let me read some of the comments. Monet, girl, LOL, didn't you just give us a new single like 10 seconds ago? Like, girl, Monet, down. However, when Bob sings, he puts on a show for the girls and gives up to 10 minutes per verse. That is true. Sibling Rivalry, the musical coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Monet often will sing like a line or two or her own enjoyment, but Bob brings out a theater kid oh. energy. Yes, honey, and wants us to know that she knows every word to the song. Exactly. Do and she says, do not. Connor says, do not interrupt him. Monet sings more while Bob raps more, period. Monet 100 100 Monet sings, sings in beats and pieces. pieces. Bob turns into Wayne Brady. <laughs> Bob turns into Wade Brady, and there's a whole production with Bingo Snaps and all. <laughs> Monet, hands and toes down, chose chaos today and voted for Bob. Someone said they, obviously they chose chaos and voted for Bob. So one of those votes didn't even count. LOL, oh, maybe Monet not, sees more often, not, but not, Bob. Not discrediting people's votes. <laughs> they said Bob chose chaos and voted Bob. Monet, down, I can hear the high notes and octaves as I'm typing. Monet sings more often, but when Bob sings, she got to pause the whole production and ends up taking a lot more. <laughs> anyway, also, I want to plug, I am doing my, my tour, Lifey Lifing, across the United States. So come, go to MonetExchangeLive.com. You're just saying across. you just saying the word across. Uh, oh, across. Oh. Across. <laughs> And, uh, uh, so go to MonetExchangeLive.com to get tickets. I'm starting April 30th, and the tour ends May 19th. And I hope to see you there in your city, girl. I saw it in at the Dynasty Typewriter in the first Los one, Angeles. though. You got to see the new one. Has it changed? Like, so much. I would love to be able to see it. I, I think I want to be on tour. When is the last show? May 19th. Oh, I can probably see it. Work. Also, um, there's something else I want to tell you. Oh, y'all, we need y'all. Y'all are doing good for a while. We need we need y'all to bring it back up. We need we need to go on Spotify and Apple and give us reviews. Review our podcast. Give us a five star rating, please, and leave a comment. It really helps y'all. It really, really, really helps. We are in some um, we're in some negotiations right now. And the more uh, uh, likes and things that y'all give us, the more leverage you give us. So give your girls a five star rating. Damn, you you're giving all our business out. This is crazy. Whatever. <laughs> y'all, Monation. Yeah, I can't live in Monation. <laughs> I, 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 I'll visit, but the tourism board is crummy. <laughs> the tourism board is, is crazy. <laughs> Stop evoking that woman. All right, y'all. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Y'all, no, this podcast is not over. I'm, when I tell you, I said goodbye, you, you keep that in. The moment I didn't even, my, the spit hadn't even left my mouth. <laughs> this bitch is already eating curry goat. <laughs>